Prepare the way.
Oh, Lord, I feel you by my side, never letting go, holding me so tight. Though I can do all things by your strength alone, you never change your love. Worship his name, you never change. You never change. Come on. Your love remains, oh God. Yeah. I'm holding on to you. Come on, church, sing it when I'm afraid. When I'm afraid, your love remains, oh God. I'm holding on to you.
the sound of the symphony to my ears. It's like holy water on my skin. It's like holy water on my skin. Oh, it's like holy water. We stand church for the joy of the Lord is our strength we bow down and worship him now how great how awesome is he and together we see
there is. There's another in the fire. There is another in the fire. All my dead left for dead beneath the water. a slave to my sin anymore And should I fall in the space between what remains of me and this reckoning Either way I won't bow to the things of this world And I know I will never be alone There was another see the light. I can see the light in the darkness as the darkness bows to him. I can hear the roar in the heavens as the space between wears thin. I can feel the ground shake beneath us as the prison walls cave in. Nothing stands between us. Nothing stands between I know that's where you'll be. 
be. Amen. Who's been blessed? Amen. I don't know. I'm going to tell you this. We were singing that song. Does anybody ever feel like somebody nudges up beside you and just goes, uh, uh, okay? Well, God kind of nestled up beside me and said, uh, somebody needs to say something. I know. I know. I might be wrong. But if somebody in this room needs to say something, you know it. And God nudged me for it. So, who are you? Let her fly. Okay? Anybody? We're going to look at Acts chapter 10. And I'm not shutting you down. I'm just telling you you can turn to Acts chapter 10. Okay? And in there, there's a story about Cornelius. Okay? Cornelius is a family man. And he's about to be saved. Mm-hmm. Makes him even better. Okay? And, and, and here's the thing. I've thought on that a lot this week. And a, lot, a lot's going on in my world this week. It makes me see things a little different sometimes. It makes me think things a little different. And here's what I want to tell you about Cornelius, family man, faith, church, everything. First off, like Karen and I had number 38 anniversary this week. That's, that's wonderful, and we're thankful for that. In the midst of my mom being sick, I don't know. It's like you need some roots. You know what I mean? You need roots, and we have roots. We have faith, and God is holding some powerful things together along the way and even in this moment that's important when we went into the emergency room on Monday and we dropped mom off me and daddy they said follow the yellow line they pulled us around and we got the field parking spot I could see the ER door so I watched people go in we sit there 12 hours and we watch people go in the ER all day ambulance drop offs and everybody else got dropped off and nobody went in with them and I thank the Lord for allowing you know my sister to be able to go in with my mom. I don't get all that other than thank the Lord that he allowed that to happen. So we're sitting there, and uh, Rod and Charlotte called me. I don't know how they knew to call me. They called, and I told them where we were, and they said, we'll be right there. I said, no, 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 we're in the parking deck. Don't come here. It's good. And Charlotte said, what would you rather have? And she starts listing off stuff to bring. I was like, no, no, we're in the parking deck. Hopefully, we won't be here that long. Well, in a minute, here come Rod and Charlotte around the corner. Charlotte's got a basket, and it's got all kind of stuff in it. And uh, that was awesome. Th- I didn't know how much I was going to appreciate that basket till 9 o'clock that night. Okay? And how God brings us stuff and brings people. And so then all of a sudden, here's what I wanted to tell you, and here's where church needs to be. It's like family and then family. And right here... And it's what we're going to read. Cornelius has got family. And then he's going to have family. And we need to realize that as a church. We're a family. And during our time, because this has so been so stressful and so separating and so pulling us apart. And we can't always be together. And we can't do things like we always do. Some people get real disenchanted with that. And I know this because I feel the same way at times. Cut off. Cut off. Left out abandoned that's the way people feel that's the way the culture feels in this moment but we're to be a family we're to be a church family we're to have our families then we're to have the church family and when that happens that's amazing charlotte and rod went on their way and a few minutes later hour or so glenn panky called he said hey me and margaret's over here at the huntsville hospital toc can what's going on i said well we're in the parking and he said i'll be right there i said no we're in the parking deck. Well, they came and we, and all of those people prayed with us. And, and it was just awesome. And I'll be honest with you, normally I'm on the other end of that. I'm not normally on that. And can I tell you something? It's awesome to be on that end of that. And we need to be that for each other. And that's what I'm saying. We need to be that for each other. So this week, we're going to work on doing that better. We as a church are going to do that better. And some of you, I hope you'll be involved in that as far as, Calling people, going to 
see them at their house and pray for them. If we need to pray for them on the front porch, we don't have to go in the house. Just what are, We're going to do some things this week. And if you want to be involved in that, I want you to be involved in that. This is how God would lead you. We'll get more of details about how to do that. But there's just many things that goes on in all of that. And it's just interesting. And one of the funniest things that come out of that, in a way for me, is me and my dad on in the afternoon. We're sitting in there and we've been snacked on several things. And there's this little bird. It kept sitting in front of our car on the concrete pillar and daddy said look at that bird he said what's he doing and i said i don't know and he said why does he keep pecking the concrete he's pecking the concrete and i said i don't know he looks like he's hungry and my daddy said hey charlotte brought us potato chips so my daddy gets out of the car and he goes around there and he starts crunching up potato chips and leaving them on the little thing and in a minute we had several visitors okay <laughs> and they're coming but the first guy that was there Here's what he would do. This is hilarious. He would sit there, and he'd eat. And my daddy said, he said, that bird's going to eat till he busts. I said, no, I think he has a stopping point. But the problem was, if anybody else showed up, here's what he did. He turned around, and he shook his tail feathers, and he went, Wah! I mean, he was like, you're not getting my potato chips. I mean, you know, that's what he was all about. And so it's just interesting to watch nature. And human nature and all of that go on in a moment of time. And then I thought about all that. You know why all that was possible? Because Charlotte brought some potato chips. Little things that you don't even think about makes a big difference in some places and sometimes. And we discount that. In this story, there's two men. There's a man named Cornelius and there's a man named Peter. And they don't more know each other than anything. And God's going to bring them together in a moment. And something awesome is going to happen. And I think there's going to be, uh, I like it, the very last verse of the chapter said, and they ask them just to stay with them for a while. Because yeah. something awesome happened. Well, let's just look at some of that. Let's just think about some of this. It's called shining the light. Let's read Acts 10, verse 1 through 8. Now, there was a man at Caesarea named Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian cohort, a devout man and one who feared God with all his household. And he gave many alms to the Jewish people, and he prayed to God continually. About the ninth hour of the day, he clearly saw in a vision an angel of God who had just come in and said to him, Cornelius. And fixing his gaze on him, and he, being much alarmed, he said, What is it, Lord? And he said to him, Your prayers and your alms have ascended as a memorial before God. Now dispatch some men to Joppa and send for a man named Simon, Pete, Simon, who is also called Peter. He is staying with a tanner named Simon, whose house is by the sea. When the angel who had spoken to him had left, he summoned two of his servants, a devout soldier of those who were his personal attendants. And after he had explained everything to them, he sent them to Joppa. Father, thank you for this time we've had together. God, for what you want to say to us today, for what you want us to be able to feel today as Solitude Baptist Church and a family as we've assembled together in this place. God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for just being able to feel sometimes when you nudge up beside us. Sometimes when you feel our hearts to where we're overflowing, to where we feel like, God, we're just going to bust unless we somehow express that and let that out. I thank you for that. And I thank you for your word today. And I ask right now, Lord, bless your word. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And this appointment, this I want you to think about here, to see this first thing, God's divine preparation of Cornelius. God is preparing Cornelius for what is to come. Cornelius don't even realize in the moment what I was going on. He don't realize that it's something's fixing to happen in his world. Something's fixing to happen majorly. But here's what we can know about him, and it's interesting. We know this. For one thing, he's a Gentile. And at this point in time in the Bible, in the book of Acts, the Gentiles have not been included in the church. It's been a Jewish church. It's been a, uh, the founder was Christ, and he was a Jewish man, a Jewish prophet, the son of God. And all of the disciples were Jewish. And, and they believed that the church was going to be the Jewish church of that day. But all of a sudden, Peter is fixing to learn something new. And Cornelius happens to be 
the man by which that's going to come. But here's what we do know about him. It said he was a Roman centurion. And he said he was a part of what makes up a cohort, which is like 600 men. So he is one of a leader of about 100 men who makes up a group of about 600 men. And if you think about the world of that day and him being a Gentile and him being a Roman and him being a soldier, but not just a soldier, but a leader of soldiers, most of those people we think of as being hard, rough, uh, difficult, hard to get along with people. But here's what we says about him. Look, it says he was a devout Man, one who feared God with all of his household, gave alms to the Jewish people and prayed to God continually. So in this whole process, God is using all things to help prepare him for what's going to come. Now, it's interesting to me if we try to look at that and understand what it's talking about there when we see that place of faith. Devout, what it says. And it, what devout means this. He just responds to God. And here's what I want you to know. This man is following God the very best he can out of his flesh. Out of his flesh. Out of a devotion. Out of a sense of saying, I'm going to do what's right. I'm going to hang in there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be devout to God. I'm going to pray to God. I'm going to give offerings to God. I'm going to do these things. And I want you to get this. He's not even a saved person. He's devout in his way. In all of this, God is using the to prepare him, to bring him to a place so he's going to be able to know salvation. I began to think about him and just think how he would have been that at this ninth hour of the day, he's going to get a vision. And here's what he's going to hear in this heavenly vision speak to him. Cornelius, here's his name. He simply hears God speak his name. I wondered, I just wondered if Cornelius ever felt like in his world, whew, I just feel like everybody's forgot about me. I'm over here. I mean, I'm from Rome and I'm way down here in Caesarea and I'm way down here and I'm trying to be faithful to God. Have you ever heard anybody say, I'm trying to be faithful to God. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, but where's God? Do you ever feel that way? People feel that way. Sometimes we may feel that way. And here's, here's O Cornelius. He's just being faithful. He's being devout. He's doing in the moment what he's supposed to be doing. And God's going to take that and he's going to honor that. And I believe there's something different about him in the way he even communicated. I love the fact that he takes two of these people that was with him. And he gets one of his soldiers and says, go down to Joppa. And here's what I'm going to. And he explained it all to them. And they're going to go down there. Here's what happened to me was this, this week, uh, Tuesday or Wednesday morning I went to breakfast with my dad we went into Jack's to have breakfast and there was a man in there and, and he came in behind me and you know everybody's spaced out they got us x on the floor stand here so I'm on the second x and he's on the third x and and I knew kind of who this man was but I, he walked in and he turned around and I seen him look and he saw my dad sitting over there and, and he and, and he said this he wouldn't send it to anybody he just said oh well there there's Mr. Kennedy I'm just gonna go eat breakfast with him and I thought well that's interesting just the way he said that. And then so I ordered my food and I'm getting ready to go. When he goes up, the lady said, uh, he said, be one black coffee. And she already had it poured up. He goes there a lot. They knew what he wanted. And so when she handed him the coffee, he said, uh, he said, ma'am, you're just amazing. You already know what I want for you right here. It's just good to come in here and see a smiling face like that in the morning. And I thought, I like this guy. Yeah. And so anyway, as we start getting ready to go, I sit down with Daddy. He come over and he said something to Dad. And Daddy said, well, my son and I are together. He said, you know my son? He said, oh, you know what? And here's what he said. He said, uh, I hadn't seen him in a long time, and he's looking so good I didn't recognize him. You know? And I thought, I do like him now. Okay. I, I like him. But here's what, here's what I, when he left, I said, you know what, Daddy? You know what that guy does? He talks up. He talks up. Everywhere he went, whenever he dealt with somebody, you, you just did this just a little bit. When he left everybody in the place, he talked them up, okay? And, and I kept thinking about Cornelius. I believe this about Cornelius was a centurion who talked people up. He had enough faith about him. He had enough belief about him that people would follow him, that he's speaking. He's talking people up. I want to tell you something for us today. We need to do some talking up. Yeah. Our culture, our world, our church needs some talking up. There are some people who may want to talk down. Don't listen to it. Talk up. Lift up. The name of Jesus, lift up your brothers and sisters in Christ, lift up 
the church, lift up. It's not time to, to put down. It's not time even in our culture, lift up, talk up. That's an important thing. And I look at that and I see that about him. Man, that's a part of that. And I believe this. That's a part of a spiritual preparation for all of us. We're in a place to be able to do that. Cornelius heard God's call of his voice. Have you ever heard God call your voice? Man, how awesome it is. How awesome it is when you know God is called. Uh, man, what an awesome thing to be able to see. He got the word, go have a man named Simon Peter to come to your house. This angel, this angelic being is telling him to go get Peter to come. Here's where my mind went in that. Is why didn't the angel just tell him what he wanted Peter to tell him? It's interesting. Why didn't he? He could have told him. He knew if he knew his name and he's been dispatched from heaven, he probably knows more than Peter knows anyway, right? But you know what God does in spiritual preparation? He prepares people to speak to me. He prepares you. To speak to people. He prepares us to understand and relate and to be family and to care and to, to give and take and be a part of that. And that's a part of what church is about. That's a part of what this whole thing can be about because he understood that. So there's where he is. And, 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 and he tell you, in all of this, and this is what's cool to me, God, God's doing a big work in using little people. Little people are connecting dots to God's master plan to incorporate and bring Gentiles into the church. And he's going to bring a man named the Apostle Paul onto the scene to go and be the leader of the, the Gentiles basically on this planet. But here's what it says, verse 9. I'll read a little bit. On the next day as they were on their way and approaching the city, Peter went up on the housetop about the sixth hour to pray. But he became hungry and was desiring to eat. But while they were making preparations, he fell into a trance. And he saw the sky opened and an object like a great sheet coming down, lowered from the four corners to the ground. And there were in it all kinds of four-footed animals and crawling creatures on the earth and birds of the air. And a voice came to him, get up, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter said, by no means. Lord, I have never eaten anything unholy and unclean. And again, a voice came to him a second time when God, what God has cleansed no longer consider unholy. This happened three times. And immediately the object was taken up into the sky. While Peter was greatly perplexed in mind as to what the vision which he had seen might be. Behold, the men who had been sent by Cornelius, having asked directions for Simon's house, appeared at the gate. And calling out, they were asking whether Simon, who was also called Peter, was staying there. While Peter was reflecting on the vision, the Spirit said to him, Behold, three men are looking for you, but get up, go downstairs, and accompany them, I love this, without misgivings, for I have sent them myself. God's spiritual revelation to Peter. God's spiritual revelation to in Peter, When something's about to happen now, something's going to go on, and Peter gets a new spiritual revelation. He gets a new picture. He gets a new understanding of something. Peter knew something from the book of Leviticus. If you read chapter 11 of the book of Leviticus, it's interesting. I read it earlier this morning, and it's all about what not to eat. It's all about the dietary restrictions of the Jewish people. And it names all kinds of animals and birds of what you're not to eat. And him being a good Jew knew he was not supposed to eat that. And he said, no, I would not eat that. But all of a sudden, God gives him a new revelation. God gives him a new picture, a new understanding of something. And many people look at this and think, this is all about food. It has nothing to do with food. It's about him understanding this principle. And he's going to state it in a few minutes. He's going to say, I now understand all people are the same to God. No longer is there just the Jewish people. All people. Jews and Gentiles. Rich people. Poor people. Color people. White people. All people are now equal before me. Peter, you need to know that. You need to get that. Because I'm fixing to walk you into an environment to experience that. But before he could go into that environment and experience that, he had to have a spiritual understanding of that. 
you know what happens to us many times? <laughs> many times in places, we get our minds locked on what we think something is. I talked about this a while back. We get our minds set somewhere and we think, oh, oh, I can't, I can't do that. I can't know that. I can't be there because my mind is locked in on something. And all the time God is saying, I want you to open yourself up to some new truth. I want you to open yourself up to some new understanding. All of a sudden, God is going to take Peter and he's going to do something amazing, not only in Peter's life, but in Cornelius' life, in Cornelius' family's life, because he's bringing him a new spiritual revelation of something God has for him. Can I tell you something? Sometimes we think, we may think we know. Sometimes we may think we know a lot. And God says this, there's more of me to know. Here's what I want to say. I'm going to say this, and I want you to get this. If we're more concerned about doctrine than we are Jesus, we need some more understanding, okay? Because what he wanted him to know about was some Jesus. He was interested in him because everything else, Cornelius had it covered. Cornelius had it understood. He has the vow. He was giving. He was praying. He was doing all these things, but he was missing a piece there, and that piece was Jesus. So Peter has this vision. I'm going to move now into verse 34, and I'm going to read this just a minute. I want to share you a couple things, and we're going to move along. But here's what Peter says to him when he gets to his house. Opening his mouth, Peter said, get this, I most certainly understand now that God is not one to show partiality but in every nation the man who fears him and who does what is right is welcome to him the word which he sent to the sons of Israel preaching peace through Jesus Christ he is I love this statement Lord of all he is Lord of all you yourselves know the thing which took place throughout Judea starting from Galilee after the baptism which John proclaimed you know of Jesus of Nazareth how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power and how he went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him we are witnesses of all the things he both did in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem they also put him to death by hanging him on a cross. God raised him up on the third day and granted that he become visible, not to all people, but to the witnesses who were chosen beforehand by God, that is to us who ate and drank with him after he arose from the dead. And he ordered us to preach to the people and solemnly to testify that this is the one who has been appointed by God to judge the living and the dead. Or of him all the prophets bear witness that through his name everyone, everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon those who were listening to the message. Now here's what I want to say about that. And here's the thought. Peter communicates, and here's what I put, life. Peter communicates life. When Peter began to speak to him, I love it. The first thing he said, you know what? I know something I didn't know yesterday. I realized something today that I didn't know yesterday. Now, I want to tell you this. If the angel would have told Cornelius what he could have told Cornelius, Peter wouldn't have knew what Peter now knew. That's why it's important. When God speaks to us and God says, get up and go do, when God says, get up and be, when God says, call somebody, when God says, go somewhere, when God puts it in your heart to move and you begin to move, I'm going to tell you, he's going to bring about something for you and something for the other person. It can never be possible unless you go and unless you do. That's important to us to be able to understand that and to grasp that because so often we want to sit and we want to wait and we want to know something and Faith is this. Faith is not just knowing something. Faith is doing something. And the doing of things brings you a lot more than you ever could have known otherwise if you just try to sit and learn something. So all of a sudden, Peter, he says, you know what? I know something I didn't know before. All people are now welcome to God. Jesus opened the door, not just for the Jews to have salvation, but for all people to know forgiveness of sin. And he said this. I love it. He said, we're witnesses to this fact. So what he says is, I'm just here to be a witness of what God has done, what God has done through the person of Jesus. And he witnessed to him what he had seen, what he had felt, what he had known. He told him that. He, he spoke that to him. And then he said this, not only that, but the Scripture also 
witnesses to everything that I'm telling you. So there's a witness of a person. There's a witness of the scripture. And then all of a sudden, as he's speaking these words, not if Peter didn't have the power to convince this man what he wanted him to know. It's almost like while he's talking, the Holy Spirit comes all the way around and goes and all of a sudden just smacks the truth right upon Cornelius. And all of a sudden, he has the witness of the Spirit. The Spirit of God brings witness to him of the truth. And in that moment, it says Cornelius becomes a believer. He becomes saved. He becomes born again. He's no more just a good man who does good things. He is now a child of the living God. All of a sudden, something has happened. There is a relationship that happened between Cornelius and God. Something that is new before Peter and, and between God. And something new between Cornelius and Peter. That, my friend, is an awesome thing. That's where we need to think. That's where we need to grasp and to realize and and have a place to be. What is God calling us to today? What is he wanting us to be able to know today? Where does he say, we live in the most unique time, (laughs) as Terry said, about, about starting back to school. We live in the most unique time that you've ever been able to know. I mean, we, we live in the most unique time. We've, this moment in Scripture was a unique time because all of a sudden the world was opening up to the Gentiles and it was going to blow all the Jewish people's mind. They still had a hard time grasping it for a long time. Peter even had a hard time grasping it fully for a long time, even though he was told that. So here's where we are in our day. We have a lot of things going on in our world. We have a lot of things pulling against us in our world. We have a lot of challenges that stands before us in our world. But here's what I'm going to tell you something. God has been and he is preparing us for where we are in this moment. God has prepared us for where we are. So don't try to shrink back and say, I don't know. He's going to tell us where to rise up. He's going to tell us where to move. He's going to tell us how to go, what he has planned for us. And when he does, we need to be like those people who got up and went down to Joppa. And then we're going to be like Peter when Peter says, you know what? I didn't read that part, but he said, I'm really not supposed to hang out with you guys because y'all are a bunch of Gentiles, and I'm really not supposed to hang out with Gentiles. I'm not supposed to go to Gentiles' house. But you know what? I'm going to go anyway. You know what's awesome? (laughs) When God tells you to do something and you say, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to do it anyway. I don't really want to. I don't know what people's going to think about that. I'm just going to do it anyway. Amazing things begin to happen when we understand what it means to respond in faith. Hey, there's one, one, just one other piece I want to tell you. Cornelius' is grace is acceptance. And we kind of said that. Cornelius there accepted it. He said, all of the circumcised believers in verse 45 who came with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out on the Gentiles. For they were hearing them speaking with tongues, exalting God. And Peter answered, surely no one can refuse the water to these who have been baptized, who have received the Holy Spirit just as we did. Can he? And he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And here's the great statement. Then they asked him to stay on for a few more days. Hey, Peter, can you hang around with us a few more days? Because I believe there's a little bit more to be known. Here's what happened. There was a connection with God that transferred to a connection with people. God is about bringing together He's not about separating. God is about bringing us together. He's not about separating us apart. Don't let anyone or anything separate you from what you know is family. Man, what is deep for you, what is powerful for you, you want to hang on to that because it's important for us to be able to know and to grasp and live in that sense of family. Man, when Cornelius knew his personal family, and man, when he got connected to God's people, family. You know what he wanted to do? He said, can y'all just stay a little longer? Can y'all just stay a little longer? There were six of them with Peter, by the way. He carried six people. They all witnessed the event because he wanted them to stay a little longer. I need to tell you this, and I need to be done. Last week, I visited with Chad Russell. You know, Chad's going through some very serious medical situations with his liver And what's going on with his heart. He had been to UAB. And got results. We spent some time with him. Right before we left. This was pretty awesome to me. Chad knew I was struggling myself. With my world. And he said hey I want to tell you something. And he began to tell me a story. 
And it involves Tim Richardson. Some of you know Tim Richardson. He came to church here for a while. He's, he's a worker in the cowboy church. Awesome young man. He told me the story. And we just, honestly, we, we cried. We just stood there and cried. Here's the way that goes real quick. And it's simple. Chad was asked to go to Texas with the cowboy church on a trip. And on the way there, Todd Mitchell was driving and told Chad, he said, when we get there, there's going to be a guy there. <clears throat> Brand new Christian. Rough dude. Been in a lot of stuff. I want you to try to hang out with him a little bit and get to know him. So they get there. And Todd introduces Chad. And he said, this is Chad Russell. His daddy is a pastor of a church. He's a preacher kid. Been raised up in church his whole life. All this kind of stuff. And Tim goes, huh, what's he know about me? Why does he care about me? Because I'm rough. I've been in all kind of trouble. Been in jail. I just listed stuff he'd done. He said, I ain't going to mess with him because he don't care anything about me. Well, the bottom line of that is they went on a roundup to pull, to round up some bulls. And Chad hung in there through that. And he told Chad this. He said, you did not judge me. And you walked beside me in my shoes. And you accepted me for just what I was. And he said this to Chad. Chad, you believed in me more than I believed in myself. And you didn't even know me. Tim said, I had money in my pocket, and I wasn't far from the Mexican border. And I was considering jumping ship and running. And Chad had such an impact on me that it changed me completely. But he never told Chad this till last Wednesday. And he called to pray for Chad. Chad told me that story, and I said, that's awesome. That's an awesome story to me from this. Because you think about this. Think about Cornelius is out there. Peter goes out there and accepts him, gives him the message, shares the word with him, and sees Cornelius and Cornelius' family change. And the beginning of the Gentile movement of the church begins to start. Think about how all that works. And think about this. I talked to Tim on the phone last night. And Tim said, you know what? It's just our job is to plant seeds. Some plants, some waters, some gets to see the fruit. And I said, you know what? And some gets to eat the fruit. And I said, you know what's cool about your and Chad's story? Chad watered a little. He watched the little fruit grow. He got to see the blessings of God in your life. And you've just turned back around and blessed him more than you ever thought he had ever blessed you. That, my friend, is awesome. That is what church is about. That is what life is about. Being there for your fellow brothers and sisters. Walking with them through a journey. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's joyful. Sometimes it's sad. But in all times, you're there. And you probably don't even realize the impact you have. To just show up. Just text. Just call. Just let somebody know. I'm here. I'm going to water. I'm here. I'm going to fertilize a little. I'm here. I want to be an encouragement to you. Because you know what? I love you just like you are. You know why? Because Jesus loves me just like I am. And we have an opportunity to share that. What is God going to say to us and where we are in our moment, in our place, in our time? We have many things today to be thankful for. We have many challenges before us to be praying for. We have many challenges before us to rise up and to move out to meet. I'm going to pray. Lee, we're going to do invitation. Lee's going to come up. We're going to have invitation. I will pray. If you need to respond to the Lord today, you know what? It'll be perfectly okay to come and bow on this altar. Okay? You'll be all right. If you want to pray where you are, that'll be fine. And you just listen to what God is saying to you. Maybe today God leans out and says, Whew, your name. You hear it.
You feel him. Do you realize that? And you need to respond to him today so that you can know what Cornelius knew when salvation came to his house. Maybe today God's saying, you're Peter. Get up and go to Caesarea. Get up and move. Get up and go. Go help somebody round up some cows. It might change their life. Let's pray.